Greetings, cyberdogs and citizens of the internet. This is Ren Dog coming at you from yet another edition of Dog Mail, the show where I read out emails that you guys send me from all over the freaking world. In the background, you can see me working on glassifying the walls of our underwater tunnel in my Minecraft survival series. And in this episode, Cyberdogs, we have got a butt ton of dog mails to get through. Remember, if you want to get your ass on dog mail, all you got to do is get in touch via email, Facebook, dogcraft.net, all the details in the description box below. But guys, let's get cracking with today's dog mails because we have quite a few to get through and the first dog mail to this week comes from Wickinger and he has the following to say. Hello Rendog, I'm a huge fan of your work on YouTube, mainly your Minecraft survival series where I first discovered you and never stopped since. I was watching your latest video on the survival series and was surprised to hear when you said you studied graphic design. I really want to be a graphic designer myself and was wondering if you can give me a few tips on how to be successful in the graphic design field. Thank you for your consideration and keep doing what you're doing from Wickinger. And yes, Wickinger, that is true. I used to be a graphic designer. I studied to be a graphic designer way back in the day. And I got to say, man, I really did love that job because uh, I was always a fan of Photoshop. I was always a fan of creating, you know, digital art wherever I could. But I got to tell you, man, it is a very, very difficult industry to do well in. But I think I've got a couple of tips for you and any other graphic designers out there that could could really, really help you um, because it's what I focused on when I was a graphic designer and it's what what helped me to get a graphic design job and do pretty well in the industry now the number one thing that you guys need to realize about graphic design is that it is a highly skilled job I compare graphic design to like a fine motor sport right so a fine motor skill sport so say for example I don't know like archery for example right which requires a ridiculous amount of uh, brain memory to do really really well in and, and the only way you can improve brain memory on fine motor skills is freaking practice man and that is all graphic design is man all the greatest graphic designers on this planet they all work on photoshop every single day of their lives for many many hours fine tuning their skills uh, and what I used to do is I used to look for, for really good pieces of graphic design online and I used to think to myself can I m reproduce that bit of graphic design and if I can't what are the steps that I need to take to learn the skills to improve, you know, to be able to do that amazing piece of graphic design? Remember, guys, that graphic design is a, 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 it's a career that is dictated by technology. Photoshop is always improving, uh, you know, graphic design uh, software is always improving. There's always new plugins coming in, new technology coming in. And if you want to be at the top of your game as a graphic designer, you have got to be on top of that technology, man. Subscribe to graphic design magazines. Make sure you're in, in touch with the, the best graphic design blogs online. Make sure you're always honing your freaking skills. Always making sure that you know exactly what you are capable of doing in, in your in graphic design, say in Photoshop or in After Effects or whatever program you're using. And if there's anything that you can't do, teach yourself to do it. Because the more skills that you can develop as a designer, the more valuable, valuable you will become as a designer. And of course, the more clients will want to take you on and the higher freaking salary you can ask for. <laughs> the second biggest tip I can give you guys is to always remember that you are creating art for somebody else. You're not creating art for yourself. And one of the biggest mistakes that graphic designers do is they'll get a brief from a client and they won't follow the brief, they'll just do it their own way, right? So a client might say, I want you to design a logo that's really, really simple and looks like it's from the 1980s. But to a graphic designer who is an artist, they will think, well, that's horrible. That's so boring. I'm going to try something completely different. And, you know, they'll try to be creative and they'll, they'll give something to the client that is basically the opposite of what the client asked for. And uh, even, though, even though what the graphic designer may have made is freaking sweet, it's not what the client asked for. So, uh, Wickinger, the two tips I can give you, man, always, always, always work on developing yourself as a designer. Always keep on top of the technology and always stick to the briefs that you get and you will do absolutely fine in graphic design, my friend. Thank you so much for getting in touch with that dog mail. Let's move on to the next one. And this one comes from Chris and he has the following to say. Hey, Rendog, 
My name is Chris and I have watched every single episode you have put on YouTube. Not a stalker or anything. <laughs> you are honestly my favorite and most entertaining Minecraft Let's Player ever and I look forward every day to seeing if you have posted your next vid. Anyway, it has come to my attention that as the best builder ever, your biggest downfall is lack of materials. <laughs> Personally, I think that this can make your builds not to their true potential. I know they are still amazing but you get my idea. So I had an idea. Maybe make a creative LP series. That that way me and the other cyber dogs can see your true building potential yet you have all the materials you need i think that would be freaking sweet one more thing there are a few questions i have always wondered about you and it would be great if you could answer them number one do you speak any african tribe language um i don't speak any african tribe languages other than afrikaans afrikaans is in fact um an African language because it was born in South Africa and I think I've spoken some Afrikaans on videos before but the last time I tried I noobed out so I'm not going to speak any Afrikaans today. Uh, number two, how many guitars do you have? I've got two guitars, I've got an electric guitar and a steel acoustic guitar. What is your favorite flavor of Smarties? Mm, damn son, I freaking love Smarties so much and my favorite Smarties were always the black ones <laughs> or the brown ones or you know the, the dark colored ones. Um, number four, at school, did you play rugby? And if so, where did you play? Yes, I did play rugby. I was the captain of my team. And yes, it was the last team in the school. It was the lowest team. But I did freaking play rugby. I did enjoy it. And I was a flanker. Uh, number five, finally, would you ever consider a face cam now that we know what you look like? Um, I've spoken about this before. And, you know, I made this YouTube channel to play epic freaking games and to share my love of games with you guys and not to share my face. <laughs> so uh, I don't think I'll be doing a face cam in the near future, but you never, you never know. Uh, sorry for the long dog mail, but you are the best. Thank you for your videos and keep up the amazing work. Your pal, Chris. Ren Dog's little helper from YouTube. Well, thanks so much for getting in touch, Chris. And regarding your suggestion of doing a creative LP series, you know what? It's kind of weird because when I read your dog mail, it made me think of an idea that I've actually been sort of pondering over in my mind for the last few months. And I have been thinking about maybe starting a creative LP series where together with you guys, we design a, a multiplayer map together in creative, you know, kind of like a, a Minecraft Hunger Games map, you know, something like that. And uh, I've got some pretty sweet ass ideas for that. So maybe that's something that, that I will explore further down the line. I think it's a sweet, sweet idea. Um, as soon as, you know, I get a little bit more time to work on YouTube videos. As you guys know, I'm, I'm currently doing a couple of other jobs at the same time. But as soon as I can free up a bit of time, that, that's definitely a sweet, sweet idea that I'll look into. Thank you so much for your dog mail, Chris. Let's move over to the next one. Hello, Ren Dog. I have been a, a subscriber for a while and I love your Feed the Beast series and your Minecraft series. I always come home from school and I watch whatever video you have posted within the time I have been at school, which is 7 a.m. to 2.55 p.m. I have been in Michigan my whole life and I haven't experienced as much as you did since you were in South Africa. I was wondering how much different is the United States compared to South Africa, except the roads are on the opposite side of the road. I say that because you always go the wrong way on your road truck simulated too and get your butthole fined. Sorry for the long dog mail, your friend Mitchman8113. Well, thank you for getting in touch, Mitchman, and uh, so awesome to hear that you watch my videos every single day, man. That is so freaking sweet. Now, I'm, it's going to be difficult for me to say how different the US is to South Africa because I've never been to the US but what I can say other than the fact that we drive on the, the wrong side of the road in South Africa what I can say is that a lot of uh, South African culture and a lot of South African stuff uh, in the country is quite influenced by uh, the, the US of A. You know, we love American music, we love American food, we only, we basically only watch American TV, American movies, etc. So, you know, the US has influenced uh, South Africa quite a lot, I think. And, you know, if you, if you, if you visit South Africa, you might see some similarities here and there. But, you know, there are quite a, quite a lot of differences also. Obviously, you know, America is the first world. It's one of, the, one of the most powerful countries in the world. And South Africa is sort of third world, second world, still an up and coming country. So there's quite a few differences between poverty and crime and all that sort of friggin' boring ass jazz. But, uh, you know, I think that I think we do share some similarities. Obviously, English is also um, one of the primary languages in South Africa. So, you know, um, a really interesting question. Thank you so much for getting in touch, Mitch Man, And thank you for your dog mail. All right, guys, let's move on to the next one. And this dog mail comes from Jacob. And he has the following to say. 
Dear Rain Dog, I know you are very busy and I appreciate you reading this. First, I would like to mention that you are the best YouTuber ever and don't you dare be modest because it's true, not every YouTuber can inspire their viewers to be all they can be. I remember back in your dog mail number 22, you said that it doesn't matter how you judged, how you're judged by other people and think uh, you're right. I believe at the end of the day, it only matters how you judge yourself and that is the best advice anyone has ever given me. I would also like to, like to ask you to never end your Minecraft series ever. It is so much fun watching your series from episode one and also watching that graveyard fill up. Speaking of which, man, we got a couple more gravestones to add to season three. Uh, also, why can't you ever finish an intro? I know there is always room for more cyber dogs, but I don't think a creeper is one of them. I get so angry. I even made some in my Minecraft Pocket Edition. Check it out. Thanks from Jacob. P.S. You can now play Terraria anywhere because there is now a Pocket version for your Android and iPhone. That is freaking sweet. I didn't know that, man. But you know what, uh, Jacob? This screenshot is so sweet that you sent me that you made on, on your iPhone. I'm going to share it with the CyberDog. So here's the screenshot that Jacob made for me, man. And it's totally true. Why do creepers always interrupt my freaking intros and outros? And maybe, yeah, maybe they are so freaking eager to be, to be cyber creepers that they literally just pop out of freaking excitement. Maybe they're not, not even trying to kill my ass. Maybe they're just like, you know, overly excited. <laughs> I, don't, I never thought creepers, I never, I've never thought of creepers in that way, man. Maybe they're actually our friends. Nah, I hate them. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for getting in touch, Jacob. Thank you so much for your dog mail, man. Guys, thank you so much for watching this edition of Dog Mail. We have come to the end of today's episode. And remember, if you want to get your buttholes on this show, all you got to do is get in touch via email, Facebook, or dogcraft.net. Check the description box below for all the freaking details. And guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. And I cannot wait to read your dog mails this week and to see you again in the next edition. Thank you so much for watching, my friends. This has been Rendon, reading dog mails. We will see you in the next video. Goodbye, my friends.